Karen. <laughs> it's time to get up. We have to record a video. Come on, you sleepy head. All right, let's get settled in. Today's video, we are doing a what sold. I, I haven't done one in a month. Guys, I am literally doing my best to show up online. I'm going to do an update video, I think, just talking about some stuff that's been going on with me. Um, I keep saying every week, I'm going to show up more, I'm going to show up more. And I'm just not quite there, but um, I'm working on it. Okay, so if you are new to my channel, I am a Canadian reseller. I'm also a U.S. reseller. I can say that now because I sell on Posh U.S. as well. Uh, I'm a mom to two girls, a wife. I work part-time in a hospital pharmacy, and I love to sell used clothing. It is my jam here on YouTube, and I share everything about my business, helping you grow a side hustle reselling clothing as well. Today's video, long time coming. I need to do these more often, I think, to put into better perspective of what's been going on in my business because ugh, August, like this summer was a lot slower than I thought it was going to be. And uh, I was just kind of avoiding my sales numbers because I didn't want it to affect my mental health. Feeling confident things would pick up and fall and kind of had a game plan for what I was doing over the summer. But yeah, I wish I would have looked at them sooner because my sales really aren't as bad as I thought they were. And I'm going to say things are starting to pick up. Last weekend, which was Labor Day weekend here in Canada and in the U.S., I had, I think I had over $1,200 in sales. Like it was a really good weekend. I didn't run a crazy sale. I didn't do the, my shoppers feature where I send a message to everyone saying, hey, it's September long, bundle and save, blah, blah, blah. I didn't even do that. Like I've stepped away from micromanaging my business. Like I set up Posh Sidekick and that's pretty much it. I've tried to step away a little bit just to give my mental health a break because this summer has been sad. Um, also, fun note, so excited. It's fall, it's September. I get to wear toques now on camera and I'm gonna be collecting a wide array of colors because I wanna have some options. But uh, this is the first time I'm wearing this toque. I just bought it a couple weeks ago and I'm loving the color. It's like a nice mustard color. Okay, let's jump into this. Do you guys wanna know what my gross sales are for the last 27 days before we jump into this video? If you do, hit like, let me know, comment yes, and I'm gonna share it with you guys. Okay, so my sales in Canadian dollars for the last 27 days were $6,123, which is really good. <laughs> um, it's really good. I'm going to have more information. We're going to go over all the data, how many items sold, all the like little nitty gritties of my business at the end of the video. So before we get into that, let's just start going over these sales. We're going to do the Canadian closet first and then the U.S. closet. My U.S. closet is, another spoiler alert, is almost like with the Canadian conversion is outperforming my Canadian closet. But if you just compare them dollar to dollar, like Canadian dollars to US dollars, it's getting close. It's getting close. So lots of US sales as well. And I'm starting to learn what sells well, what's holding better dollar value. I definitely am doing a lot more comp searching on Posh US when I'm out shopping instead of the Canadian side. I generally know what sells on the Canadian side just from selling on there for three and a half years, but the US side is where I'm learning right now. Okay, first off, Canadian closet. Uh, we are only going over sales that were over $40 in this video, and we still have lots. Like, my ASP was really good the last 27 days too, so... All right, let's jump in. First is a Lululemon back in action long sleeve. It was a size medium and it sold for $45. This did have a small flaw on the front of it, which I didn't notice until I brought it home. I was a little bit sad to be honest, but it's such a new style and uh, it was very minimal. So I just made sure I disclosed that. What I wanted to say is that even if something has a flaw, and if you know it's desirable and on trend and that people are looking for this item, I would still list it and disclose it. And this is a really good example of an item that can sell with a flaw. 
Next up is a vintage 80s Hollywood jeans denim jacket. That's like the brand Hollywood jeans. Uh, it was in a size large and it sold for $56. I have been sitting on this jacket for, I don't even know. I bet you I've had it for a year, at least a year. A really slow burn. I got to be more careful with my vintage jackets, which styles I pick up. I mean, I got a good dollar, but if I would have known it would take a year to sell you know a year ago i don't think i would have picked this up i don't like holding on to items for that long they take up a lot of room especially jean jackets in my um closet all right next up is a five piece bundle to my girl sad but cute here on posh canada i don't know if you guys follow her on instagram she's just a gem she bought a five piece bundle for let's look at this 220 dollars first is a pair of lululemon 2020 fast and free leggings size 10 Next, Lululemon 2021 ribbed high-rise joggers, size 8. Next is a pair of Lululemon Align high-rise leggings, size 8. A Scorpio zodiac symbol necklace and a Babaton Streep ribbed midi dress, size large. So all fabulous pieces, perfect for fall, great price. Thank you so much. I know you love your bundle. These were fabulous pieces and this is such a good way to kick off that first week. Next up, I had a pair of Manitoba Mukluk suede boots, size seven. They sold for $63. I will almost always grab these if they are like 15 to $20. I don't think I'll pay more than $20 for these unless they were the full leather boot. Manitoba Mukluks, these are good sellers. Next up is a Vintage Roots Pullover Sweatshirt Size Large. This sold for $40 to KBreezy26. Thanks, girl. She has bought from me many times over the years. I know her aesthetic. I know what she's looking for, and uh, my closet definitely curates to her. So I love Roots sweaters. So on this topic, if I come across any basic Roots um, zip ups or pullovers. What I'm looking for is solid color, nothing too crazy and roots in either like big logo on the front, big writing on the front. It has to be noticeable. I know there's some zip ups that just have the small one. I don't grab those ones as much. I don't feel like they hold as high of value as the sweaters that have like the big logo on the front. I don't find them often, but these are one of my fave vintage items to sell, especially you can get like the old roots sweaters. Next up is a NYX Wing Woman Contour Bra size 5. This sold for $44. I'm always on the hunt for NYX. It still sells pretty consistently. I feel like I have at least one NYX bra in every What Sold video, and we might even see one more. I can't remember. There's been a lot of sales over the last month. Next up is a pair of Carhartt Women's Loose Fit Straight Leg Jeans. These were in a size six. Carhartt is a fabulous brand to sell. They hold a pretty good value. These pants, brand new here in Canada, are like $100 um, if you went to Mark's Work Warehouse to buy them. So yeah, I feel like people are always looking for a deal. Carhartt also never goes on sale. And I know because my husband wears Carhartt every day. And man, we just we rarely can catch a sale and when we do we are buying him a new pair of pants for christmas and we put them away because he gets one new pair every christmas <laughs> okay i do have to state this he doesn't work out on sites anymore he works in the office more he does do site visits um if he was working out on site he would probably need more than one pair a year because yeah those guys those working men and women they go through those through those pants but yeah i love picking up carhartt one of my fave jeans to pick up next is a pair of naot sandy leather flower studded sandals and these were in a size seven uh, I feel like Nayot has been selling really well for me this year. I typically pick these up between $10 and $15. My net earnings were $31, so I'm making over $15. I'm making $15 to $20, and they're also, they've also been really quick flips, so selling within a couple weeks. I do think the pricing is a little bit lower than what I've seen in previous summers, but that's just something I've come to terms with. You know what? Sales are going to be a little bit slower. Profit margins are a little bit smaller, but I'm still moving inventory. And obviously 
learning through the process and trying to pick up better items. But Naots, ugh, I'm still hunting for them. If sandals come out, I will pick them up now, list them. And if I hold on to them next year, I will do that because I like the Naots sandals. Okay, one more thing. Since I'm selling on the US side now, I've noticed seasonality isn't as strong as it is here in Canada. Like, I don't think there's one spot in Canada, maybe like Vancouver area, where you can wear sandals all year round. Where I know in the States, you know, you can wear sandals all year, all year round. But in some states, I know there's lots of cold states. But yeah, we definitely see a bigger swing in seasonality here in Canada. So I'm excited to find like still summery items and list them over onto the posh US side. All right, next bundle. This is another big bundle. This sold for $225. It went to E in Canada. Thank you. Uh, five items. First is a Wilfred Free Isabel Waffle Knit Sweater. I've had this for like six months, but I think some things just kind of slowed down selling at the end of last winter and I've just been holding on to them till it can pick up again in fall. Next up is a Wilfred Tan Cortetta turtleneck sweater, extra small. I feel like this had alpaca or cashmere into it. So two material contents I am looking for. I've found like three or four sweaters in the last week with Angora and they're so, so soft. So another material content that I'm looking for 100% while I'm outsourcing. Next is a Pilcro boat neck sweater, extra small. An Anthropology Harmony lace peasant top, extra small. And a Zara brown wool jacket coat in a size small. So fabulous bundle, all great pieces. A couple of them are newly listed and yeah, just happy to see some of these things going. Also, something I'm noticing over these last few sales, lots of fall items. If you have fall and winter items in your death pile, now is the time. Pull those out. Get them listed. This is what people are shopping for the most right now. And I feel like this is the time where you get like your top dollar for these items. Next is a Wilfred Plunge Front Wool Cardigan Sweater, size large, sold for $58. This actually came from my personal closet. I wore it once, I think, for like a Christmas party, and I just don't reach for it. I didn't really like how it fit on me. Uh, my, I feel like my torso is short, and it just, I don't know, I didn't really like it. So I threw it in my closet, sold for $58, and I actually picked this up secondhand as well enjoying a nice warm afternoon coffee. Okay, so bought it secondhand plus made some money off it and wore it out. That's a good deal always. Next is a MEC, Mountain Equipment Co-op is what it stands for, fleece fuzzy zip up purple hooded sweater, size large. Uh, this sold for $45.00. Mech is like, I don't know, I have I like a love hate for it. Sometimes pieces hold good value and sometimes they don't. I definitely like their zip up jackets um, and I guess finding it for the right dollar. Also their fleecy stuff. This was a newer style item and that's why I think it did so well. It was also a size large, but I've left quite a few mech items at the thrift store in the last week just because they were less substantial. Um, you know, really, really thin fleece, kind of overpriced. The mech items, they aren't, I feel like they're definitely like your no name for outdoor technical wear and they're just not overly priced. So resale is like, you're not gonna get the same price as if you're selling like an Arcteryx or a Burton sweater or something like that. Uh, she did leave me a comment, it was Divas glad rags and she said so soft and cozy I can't wait to wear this oh my gosh I can't wait for you to wear it because I did try that on myself and I was like oh man this is like the softest fleecy sweater ever all right next up we have a pair of lululemon commission golf shorts size 34 these sold for 43 dollars I thrifted these for Jeff last year. He wore them for one season. He didn't really like how they fit on him and he just gave them back to me. And he was like, you can list these. So yeah, nice to get a little bit of wear, wait, make a little money off them, of course. 
Next up is a Volcom Gore-Tex Shell Snowboard Jacket, size men or size medium men's. Uh, it sold for $110. This was another one of my personal items. This was my snowboard jacket a few years ago. I loved it. Unfortunately, with men's jackets, sometimes they're just a little too tight in my bum area and I, I did wear it for two years but it was so hard to bend over and do up my do up my snowboard and I was like I'm done Jeff and I ended up switching to a women's jacket so yeah I've had it just sitting around for the last two years so happy to toss it in my closet make some money off of it next is a free people layered lace peblum top size small this went to Kelly Elwell Thank you, Kelly. Uh, she did leave me a love note, quick delivery, nicely packaged items, just as described. She always has great pieces. Thank you, Kelly. Oh my gosh. I I swear, I like when I list things, sometimes I'm like, ooh, I bet you Kelly's gonna like this one. <laughs> Cause yeah, I've I've gotten to know what you like over the last year. Thank you so much for your purchase. Next up is a Free People Luna Gardenia sweater. This was in a size small, sold for $47. Coastal, neutral, boho festival, like this is nice. I'm still looking through the white sections for Free People tops because I feel like these do really well all year round. And I just listed a few Free People items this week too. Next up is a Lululemon Down For It vest, size four. This sold for $70. That was a pretty quick flip. I just sourced that a couple weeks ago. Uh, next is an Essentials mock neck pullover sweater, size small. This sold for $80. Another item I just sourced like within a month. So lots of quick sales, which is good because that means that I'm sourcing things that people are looking and shopping for. I feel like I have a pretty good thumb on what's going for fashion, what people are shopping. Like I said, I do research. I look things up. I look through solds. Um, I comp search a lot of stuff too. There's lots of things I don't comp search, but there's a lot of things I comp search right now. Just double checking what the values are sitting at and trying to get an idea of like recent sales or whatever. But Essentials is still a trending brand and uh, yeah, I would pick them up anytime. Also, I paid like $16 for that sweater at a buy sell trade store. I was shocked. I think they they missed it. They didn't know what it was. Next up is a Rails Hunter plaid black sterling button down, extra small, sold for $40. Um, Rails is one of those brands I don't sleep on. I will always pick it up if the cost of goods is like probably under $18. I do think I would pay up depending on the color, the style and how new it is, but I'm trying to score it for like under $17. And uh, for this, the earnings on this top were 32. So 15, $20 profit. A lot of these I will find at Value Village. So I'm paying like 10 bucks for them, which are pretty good. Next up is a Mech Gore-Tex Winter Shell Jacket, size extra large. This is another personal item. I went through our front hall closet and like just pulled jackets that I'm no longer wearing. Happy to see that one go and it sold for 49 bucks, which I was surprised for. And I did thrift that one secondhand as well. Next up is a pair of Mother Denim the Insider Ankle Cut Jeans, size 28. They sold for $90. I don't find Mother often, although I feel like it's been in a bunch of my what solds. I really don't find it often. I'm paying up for this. Most of the time I'm finding them at buy, sell, trade stores or consignment stores. This was a really good flip. I think I paid about $17 for these jeans, so not too shabby. Next is a pair of Rolla's High Rise Straight Leg Black Jeans, size 30. These sold for $63. I try and find Rolas all the time. It's on my brand to pick up for jeans. Uh, definitely no skinnies, just looking for straight legs, tapered, wide leg, things like that. I feel like they're selling pretty consistently for me and turnaround is within a month. So I will continue to grab these ones. And even better if the stock photo is from Revolve. I just feel like they style things so, so well. So, so well, right? Everything is like perfect how they how they do their styling. Next is a Free People embroidered floral blouse, and this is in a size extra small, sold for $50. Free People definitely does very well on the Canadian side. 
not as well on the US side, but I'm okay with that. That's why I have two closets. Next is an Arcteryx Noden jacket, lightweight, size large, sold for $99. I did sell this, I don't know if you guys remember, I sold this like months ago, but when the person received it, the tags were cut out inside of it and I knew that, but I didn't put it in there. Like it was like the material content tag in the side. And they said they were giving the jacket as a gift and they preferred to have the tags inside. So um, they returned it, Posh approved it, I accepted it, whatever, resold it. The thing was, is that this jacket came back to me and it's just been hanging up in my inventory room for months. So I finally got it or copied and reactivated that listing and it sold within a couple days. So Arcteryx, make sure you're looking for that. This, this brand, I, I love selling that brand. Next up is a Free People Easy Street Color Block Sweater, size extra small, sold for $63. I bought this last year. I wore it last winter personally. You guys probably remember seeing it in videos. Um, but I just, I don't know. I'm rotating things through my closet right now and maybe like rediscovering my style a little bit better and trying to be more like true to myself. So I just, it doesn't, no longer serves me. <laughs> I literally am like selling so much stuff that's my own personal right now. Next up is a Vintage Roots Athletic Sweatshirt, size extra large. This sold for $40. Um, this one I also sourced for myself, but I just didn't like the collar situation. I like crew necks. I don't like things that like sit too close to me. They make me feel like I'm suffocating. So I threw this one back into my closet and it was a pretty quick sale. Next is a Wilfred cropped knit cardigan sweater, size medium, sold for $40. Uh, lots of Wilfred and Babaton items high on my pickup list, um, but very much checking the style. Are these current colors? Is this a current trend? Is this neutral, minimalist, contemporary? Like there has to have, they have to have multiple factors, especially if it is an older item. So I am quite selective, but definitely big preference to neutral tone items. Next is a pair of Seven for All Mankind Josephina Boyfriend Jeans, size 27. These sold for $45. Spruce City Glam, she left me a love note. Awesome jeans, just as described and well packaged. Highly recommend this lovely seller. Thank you so much. Next is an outdoor brand. I love to see, and we might see one or two more items by this brand. It is L.L. Bean, and this was a Scotch plaid flannel button down shirt. Uh, it was in a size small, sold for $41. I'm looking for really nice quality flannels right now. And if I'm paying under $10, I'll pick them up. Typically, I'm seeing them sell between $40 and $45 on the Canadian side. And I'm okay with that. That's like a $20 profit. These are quick flips. Most of these are selling within a couple weeks of listing. Next up is a Lily Pulitzer Holly printed cotton dress, size extra small, sold for $55. I don't find Lily Pulitzer like any time. <laughs> I found this at a consignment store and I got a good deal on it. It was on sale. Yeah, I, I don't know. I will pick it up if it's for the right price, but I was hoping to make more money. I don't know what is realistic. I saw some items that were selling for like $100 or over $100. Um, so I think I had a little bit higher expectations, but I've just been trying to accept reasonable offers and barter with people to a reasonable offer. Next is a pair of Wilfred Anna Pants straight leg trousers, size 10. These sold for $60. This is the season. I'm on the hunt for Wilfred and Babaton pants. As long as they're in good con good condition, nice colors, gray, black. I love black and tan. Um, I don't think I'll pick up like pinstripe or anything that kind of like dates them. But this style, this was an older style, but because it was a neutral tone and it was a tapered leg, uh, I felt like it was kind of a classic style as well. 
All right, next, a Lululemon Cabin Yogi Wrap Hooded Sweater, size two, sold for $45. This went to Deborah Wardell. I love the sweater, great layering piece, love the color and the feel of the material. Thank you so much. This truly was like a soft piece. I feel like there was even 5% cashmere. A lot of their um, knit stuff either has like cashmere, alpaca, um, or merino wool. And yeah, that was a really, really soft one. All right, moving along. Oh my gosh, there's so many cells. Okay, so we have another mech item. This is a pair of mech gray recycled nylon joggers for men. They were a size 30. They sold for $40. Um, I don't find men's pants very often by mech that aren't like beat up. So this was, this was a good flip, but Okay, I should say I've had those for like a couple months too. So I did have to sit on them to wait for the right time. Next is a Lululemon fleece and thank you pullover sweater, size four. This sold for $60. Uh, Lululemon is one of my top selling brands. So neutral tone, newer style, no brainer that this would sell and hold a good value. Uh, next is a two piece bundle. This sold for $100 in it is a vintage Arco Iris 100% alpaca knit sweater and an anthropology velvet kimono type um, jacket. And yeah, both items sold for hundred bucks. This was a fabulous bundle. The sweater was super soft. She actually messaged me. She just received it and she was like, I wasn't expecting the sweater to be as soft as it was. And yeah, alpaca stuff. Oh man, it's so amazing. I personally love the feeling of any knits that have alpaca in them. Even if it's just a blend, it's always the softest type sweater. All right, next is a Lululemon Perfectly Oversized Sweater XL sold for $80. I have a couple of the Perfectly Oversized Sweater in my closet right now, a few various colors. It is like one of my personal favorite Lululemon sweaters to wear. So picking these up, I will pay up to 20, maybe even $25 for these sweaters if they are the right size and the right color that I would be looking for. Next is a pair of Lululemon Align Crop uh, pants, size 16. These sold for $56. Good sale. Uh, I think I found two of those and I feel like both of them have sold now. This next item sold within 24 hours and it was a Lululemon twin ribbed turtleneck sweater size large and it sold for $66. I have, I think another one of these sweaters in green in my closet right now, but yeah, those are nice sweaters. Uh, next is a pair of a Goldie Riley high rise straight leg crop jeans size 26. Those sold for $75. I don't pick up their crop styles as much anymore unless it's like a, a wider leg or a straight leg this this was probably a little bit shorter than what I would pick up now uh, and then the last item on Canada then we're going to go over U.S. is a Wilfred silk floral mini dress size small and this sold for $50 this sold within a couple days of listing so pretty quick sale as well I'm impressed with this. Now, keep in mind, these are sales over $40 in the last month, but yeah, some pretty solid sales. Okay, let's get logged into my US closet. Again, we're just gonna be going over items that sold for over $40. First item, I don't know if you guys remember these, but the Pointer brand Hickory Stripe Carpenter Pants in size 28 those sold they sold for eighty dollars there was other ones that were listed i think around 125 i did see some that were priced pretty high but i felt like this was very reasonable for what i paid and the uniqueness of them so great sale kicking off the u.s sales next item to sell was a wilfred quilted bomber jacket extra small this sold for $71. Love these jackets. This is the first time I've ever found something like this. And I think I paid like $15 for it. Like it was priced so, so well. So that was a, that was a good flip. Picked it up in spring, held on to it for a little bit. Not sad about that one. Next up is a Lululemon blue cashmere blend knit sweater, size large. That sold for $54. 
Uh, I will continue to scoop up any of their knit sweaters that I can find. Just the sales from this video, they are still holding value. So last year I did really well with these sweaters. Same thing this year. If I come across them, I'm going to pick them up. I think they are a safe bet. Next is a two-piece bundle. This sold for $80 and in it is a pair of Lululemon warm down joggers in a size eight and a pair of one teaspoon Fox Blackhawks cut off jean shorts in a size 28. These went to Moonstar FC and she left me a love note. Excellent seller. Thank you so much. I have not received very many uh, love notes on the US side. I actually have some some facts that I'm going to share later about my US side closet. So these love notes on this side are just like so precious to me right now. Next is a Lululemon Swiftly Tech long sleeve shirt size six. This sold for $40. Uh, I feel like that's pretty even to what they're selling for on the Canadian side right now. So dollar for dollar, both sides, they're pretty much the same. Next up is a Patagonia Los Gatos quarter zip fleece sweater size large. This sold for $58. I've had this for a couple weeks, but Patagonia is one of those brands. They just sell really quickly and especially if you have it priced right. Next up is a pair of Lululemon Still Pants. These were a wide leg style size two. They sold for $40. This is an older style of Lululemon pant, but to me, it's like a unicorn. Like people that love these pants, love these pants. Like they're just a great pant. They're super soft. They hold good value. Every time I find them, they seem to sell pretty quickly and usually between that 40 to $50 range on Canadian, on the Canadian side and now on the US side as well. Next is a Reformation orangey that's like the style name dress in azure blue and it was a size small sold for $112 uh, I've only found or found and sold a few reformation dresses and they usually do pretty well so I like the like peasant style farmhouse style to me this is very like country girl look um and I'm always hunting for them but I don't find them very often here in Canada Next is a Free People Intimately Oversized Cardigan Sweater, size large. This sold for $42. It was in next to new condition. It had a ton of likes, definitely fall tones. Next is a Babaton Thurlow, that's such a weird word, <laughs> sweater. This is an alpaca, alpaca blend knit sweater, size medium, sold for $50. These sweaters retail for like 150 bucks. So that's a good deal on that sweater. And um, always looking for those. Those are one of my favorite styles to sell from Aritzia, especially in winter. Next is another fantastic flip. So these are the Salvatore Ferragamo Vera Bow um, shoes that I had found I think like two months ago beginning of summer they were in a size six they sold for $148 and that's $148 US which is probably like a hundred and I don't know maybe 180 so I'll gain $45 so that's like $190 Canadian I paid $55 for these so I did pay up for these they were in excellent condition but I made a good return on them. Those That was a really good flip and relatively quick as well. Next up is a Wilfred Tan Santorini cardigan sweater, extra small. This sold for $51. Um, this was super cute, neutral tone, coastal, like a uh, perfect fall cardigan. Uh, next is a pair of Lululemon warm down joggers in a size 10. They sold for $40 little bit less than what I like to see for my Lululemon joggers, but uh, I was I was really like making sales some weeks, like just accepting offers and trying to make sales because it was a really slow summer. It I'm, I'm hoping now it's going to start to be more consistent with sales. 
Next is an Anderson Bell Jewel Hoodie Half Zip. This was a new to me brand. Very nice. I would consider it designer. They retail for like $300 to $400. And this was in a size small, sold for 60 bucks. And this one I found at Valley Village. Like it was, I was, it was the tag and the quality of the sweater material that made me pay attention. But when I looked it up, I was like, hey, I need to look for this brand more often. Next up is a Babaton Black Noir Knit Sweater, and it's like a duster type sweater, size small, sold for $48. I've had this for a long time, a bit lower than what I was hoping to get for it, but I'm just happy to move it through and not, not hold on to it any longer. Next is a Wilfred Janvry Floral Lace Mock Neck Dress, size 6. This sold for $49. Definitely, definitely seeing a lot more of my Aritzia items selling on the US side. So my Wilfred and Babaton, which is awesome. I don't feel like there's a ton of it. Like it's, it hasn't flooded the resale market on the US side yet. So I, I feel like any Canadians selling on the US side have an upper hand with um, those brands. And yeah, I'm seeing a ton of sales happening from those brands and still holding good dollar value. And I'm going to say probably because Aritzia is one of those brands that is pretty much charging the same price between Canada and US and they are a Canadian based company. Next is a pair of Lululemon 2021 Align High Rise Leggings. These were in a size two. They sold for $78. Anytime I have a pair of leggings that are 2021 or newer, I am putting the year in the title right after Lululemon, just to let people know that this is a new style. It is, you know, two years old, and I think it helps put more value on the item for sure. Like 100% puts more value on the item. Next is a pair of Babaton Conan black uh, trouser pants, size two. These sold for $51. Um, another trend that I've been noticing is that small sizes sell. <laughs> I know everyone always says uh, larger sizes sell really well in the States, but my small size stuff for the brands that I sell are also doing very well. So that's good news because I find a lot of small size stuff. I don't find a ton of, you know, size eight and up. So yeah, I'm going to just keep grabbing stuff and listing and hoping it, it sells, I think. <laughs> listing on a, on a dream, on a hope. <laughs> okay, getting back to business. Next is a pair of Lululemon Studio Pants. These had no liner, size four. They sold for $57.00. Oh my gosh, I love my studio pants. Every what sold now has a pair of studio pants in it. And these studio pants for me are like, as soon as I list them, they're selling within a couple days, which is fabulous. That's, that's great because they are a lot of times a bit of an older style too. Next is a Wilfred Isabel Green Gingham dress, size six, kind of like a summer dress style, sold for $55. That's a good sale. Nice kind of fall piece. I think that would look cute with like a baby, baby tee underneath. Uh, this next one, I'm not sure if you guys remember this, but that vintage floral maxi dress that I found a couple months ago, finally sold, $40 US side. Whoop, whoop. <laughs> I was excited about this one because when I brought it home I was like okay hey, I think this is cool but should I have picked it up like was this a good buy I mean I didn't get rich off of it but I did make some money off of it so that's a win in my books next is another time this brand is going to show up it's a rails Jackson buffalo check flannel button down size medium this sold for $45 so Great sale. Rails is selling on both the Canada and US side. Be careful of the colors you're picking up. Know what's trending. I personally be picking up like darker and richer tones right now. I will also pick up like light blues and whites for that coastal vibe. But there are certain ones that when I look at, they're super dated. So just be careful on the styles and the cuts of them. Next is a Coach Satchel Bone Buckle Bag. And this sold for $50. I've had this sitting in a money pile for a long time. <laughs> I do not like listing purses. So happy this one sold. It was listed at the beginning of the summer. And uh, I think I paid like 10 bucks for it. So not too shabby. This next item was a quick flip within a week. 
Um, and it's a pair of a Goldie Clio cinched wide leg denim jeans, size 27. This sold for $96. I was like, I picked them up and I was like, oh, they're a Goldie. They're a wide leg. Cause I had seen one of the pant legs, but when I got home, I realized there was like this, almost like this denim belt that like gathered the bottom hem or whatever the bottom of the pant at the ankle and had they been wide leg I definitely like no brainer would have grabbed them but had I seen that they had a gathering at it I probably wouldn't have picked these up so I'm happy that I was fooled at the at the buy sell trade store and grabbed them because I think I probably would have passed on these and I paid like $25 I think for them and my earnings were 74. So I made 50 bucks on these within a week. That is a really quick flip and good, good money in my pocket. Uh, we just have a couple more left here and then we'll have an eBay sale. So next is a pair of Keen Venice H2 trail hiking sh sandals, shoes, whatever, size eight. These sold for $47. Um, great shoes. Surprised on the price but because I have been passing these up so I don't know I feel like I need to maybe take some more chances on these if they have them priced for like ten dollars and under uh next is another item you guys might remember this is from the giveaway and it's a pair of climb Sundance activewear pants these were in a size large they sold for 41 dollars and they are going to Alaska which doesn't surprise me because that's like snowmobile capital I'm sure of the United States um and yeah I did end up washing them I don't know if you guys remember but that video I was doing the giveaway you had two options you guys chose the other option but I did wash these and the the light stains had come out and they were in great condition so great sale I don't that's another brand I just don't find often I find I I think personally that people that buy them wear them until they get worn out right like it's kind of like an investment piece into like warm gear basically all right next is a two-piece bundle and this sold for a hundred dollars first is a pair of lululemon 2021 swift speed high rise leggings size eight and the second item is a lululemon hoodie jacket zip up size large and this went to moonstar fc oh my gosh Oh my gosh, girl. Thank you so much. Yeah. So this is her second bundle from me. I hope you love them. Uh, I'm thinking maybe she watches my channel and uh, just, I think the little interactions we've had. So if you do, thank you so much. I appreciate it. And as like I said before, if any of you guys make a purchase from me, drop in the comments, let me know you're coming over from YouTube so I can say hi. And also um, please leave me a love note because I don't have very many on the U.S. side and I feel like my U.S. buyers have been really harsh on me. <laughs> I, uh, I, yeah, yeah, my star rating is really low. It, not really low. I think it's like 4.8, but I've never been between, below 4.9 and yeah, it's just breaking my heart couple like weird comments when they give me them and I'm like okay that doesn't make sense but I usually don't poke the bear or you know like try and investigate or figure out all right we got one eBay sale and then we're gonna go over some analytics so the eBay sale is a pair of Spanx cropped flare leg high-rise denim jeans and I can't see oh size medium and these sold for $45 I, I actually forgot to delist these from my Poshmark closet and someone sent me an offer for $45 I was like okay that must be market value for these jeans right now um it was it was so funny okay let's do this I'm excited. Um, this is much better than I was thinking it was going to be. So yeah, I'm, I'm excited about this. All right. Total sales. This is from August 11th till September 7th. So 27 days, just short of four weeks on Poshmark Canada. My gross sales were $2,727. On Posh US, they were $2,118 USD converted into Canadian dollars. It's actually more than Posh Canada. And it was $2,859. So keep in mind, this is gross numbers, not what I was paid out, not cost of goods. 
Um, but it's good to see that sales are happening on eBay. One sale, $45. Um, I am going to start working on eBay again as I slowly get back into my groove from summer and try to balance out my workloads. And then I also did a whatnot show earlier in August and I had $424 in USD or USD in sales and it worked out to about $572 Canadian. So grand total gross sales, $6,123. That's, that's awesome. Uh, I did calculate what my daily total was and this is going to be minus my whatnot show so this is just Poshmark Canada, Poshmark US and eBay. So averaged out about $207 a day, which is pretty good. For the like simplicity of this video, I'm actually going to be converting everything into Canadian dollars for numbers wise because the dollar is so like the Canadian dollar there's such a difference. It's a 35 cent difference on the dollar between Canadian and US money. So just to kind of keep it all in one currency, I'm going to be converting everything into Canadian dollars going forward throughout the video. All right, so last time we did a video, I was averaging about $122 a day. So I've gone up almost $100 a day. That's good. Now, it has definitely been the last like 10 days where I think this is pulling these numbers up. Prior to that, things have been slower. Uh, I have also noticed my US closet is starting to push past my Canadian closet. And this last weekend, I actually made more money on the US side than the Canadian side. Also, Steph from the Every Closet, she also has a YouTube channel. If you haven't checked her out, I'm going to pop her up here. She had told me this. She, when I first said I was like setting it up, she kind of helped me with a couple things when I was setting up my US closet. And she said like, I will probably have higher sales on the US side than, a, than the Canadian side with what I sell. So that's awesome. I'm pumped about that. Um, yeah, between both closets, I definitely am... Um, like seeing a good return the the part that's tough is I used to do like this on just Poshmark Canada but um yeah it's just been it's been slower it's been slower lately okay so in total I sold 94 items uh again going forward none of this data is going to include my whatnot I don't think live selling should be included really in my data because it's definitely like lower ASP it's just a different style of buying um, I did think that I was going to try and dip my toes more into live selling, but I'm not sure where I stand with that right now. It definitely is a bigger workload and I don't have a lot of extra time right now or like mental capacity to commit to live selling. So I'm not saying I'm not going to do it, but I just don't know how it fits right now in, in my life. So like I said, everything going forward excludes whatnot. So I sold 94 items. Uh, my average sale price is $59. That's, that's really good. That's pretty good. That's definitely up from the last video. And I would say too, that really changed over the last 10 days. Lots of the information in this video has been pushed over in the last 10 days. Like the last 10 days, things are just turning back on here. Uh, and I have noticed higher value items selling. So we talked about this before where I said, you know, you got to figure out which demographic of people are least affected by interest rates, inflation, and all this stuff going on. And I hate to break it into social classes, but sometimes you need to target the people that are shopping for wants, not for needs. And as a reseller, looking at this from a business perspective, that's really who I'm trying to focus on right now. And that, that makes sense why I'm seeing my ASP climbing, why I'm noticing more higher value items selling as well. Top brands are going to be Lululemon, Aritzia, brands like Wilford, Babaton, and Free People on the Canadian side. Uh, I think this is going to start to shift to vintage and handmade as I source a lot of this stuff in fall and winter. I want to start experimenting with jean brands as well on the US side because it's definitely a market I haven't done much with. I feel like on the Canadian side, um, jean sales for 
outside of the main brands that I'm selling, the value starts to drop. But with the US with being like how many like 60 million users, it's just a more diverse group of shoppers. So I am going to start committing more time to comp searching and researching jean brands in the in the US and what they're what they're selling for which ones I should be looking for and putting a focus on jeans that are selling consistently for over $45. On that note, if you want to share some of your wisdom with me, if you have jean brands that you find sell consistently for over $45, I'd love to hear the brand and maybe the styles or colors that you're picking up and uh, I will add that to my little mental notes when I'm out sourcing. Uh, trends for sales. So 83% of my sales were an offer to like and 15% were bundle sales. I used to be a bundle seller, but my price point used to be lower. So I found as I pushed my ASP up higher and higher, I get more like single sales. So offer to a like than I do bundles and I'm okay with that. But I have seen that kind of like flip happen in my business. Um, I also use Posh Sidekick and I have it set up to 25% off within 30 minutes to both my Canadian and US side closets. So if I'm running a sale on the weekend, I'm sending a blanket offer for 35% off. And that's about the lowest I'm willing to go. I have also adjusted my pricing a little bit. So I've brought my, my starting price down a little and I'm going to try playing around with these percentages for a bit. Heading into the bu busiest time of the the season or the busiest time of the year I really don't want to send my first offer at 30% because that means in order for me to trigger another offer to them I have to send it for 40% so yeah we'll see how things go and how buyer habits are in the next couple of weeks and then I can adjust then as well with my with my listing so yeah that's kind of the scoop on the trends in my sales uh, fun fact, and I kind of shared this a little bit before, but I receive more four star and under ratings on the US side than I do on the Canadian side. And I'm selling the exact same things on both sides. I don't know what it is, but I feel like on the US side, they're just so critical. <laughs> they're so like hard, the expectations so high. And I feel like I have really good quality pieces with like minimal flaws. I don't know. I don't know why. So I invite you guys to drop in the comments, share with me. What are your speculations and thoughts? Um, why would I be receiving more less than five star ratings on the US side? But yeah, I don't know what it is. I, I like was looking through it and I was like, I'm sitting at a 4.8. Like that's awful. I've never been at a 4.8. I'm like a 4.9. And I feel like I've never hit the five because I do get the odd one um, that's less than five, but it's like so far and few between where on the US side, yeah, I've been noticing it a lot, a lot more. Okay, sales goals. Let's go over this. I'm going to share mine and then I want to hear what yours are. So make sure you stay till the end so you can share your sales goals in here. I want to cheer you on. I want to help you out, ask any questions. Also, I'm going to toss in here really quickly, if there's anything that you want me to talk about in a future video, or you want me to address or talk about in a work with me, please, please drop them down below. And I'd love to hear any questions or suggestions that you guys have. So sales goals, I feel like I'm mentally back. Um, I talked a little bit about this, I've been having some struggles this summer, and I'm going to do an update video where I kind of just talk about that stuff, not reseller related and just share a bit more personal things, but I'm trying to keep it out of all my other videos. Um, I have been struggling in the last month to prioritize my time and get everything done that I need to get done. And I feel like I've actually just been kind of dropping the ball on a couple things, but I'm starting to feel more focused. I went for a massage yesterday. I've been doing meditation. I have like, um, what is it? A grateful or thankful journal? What the heck is it? It's like a thankful journal. So every day I write three things that I'm thankful for. And I'm just trying to work more on my mental health right now. So goals. In the next two weeks, I want to try and list 60 items a week. It's like so doable for me. I can do this. I list three days a week. 
that makes 20 listings a day, I can usually do that in like one to two hours max. Um, I can list 20 items pretty quickly. And I'm not doing full listings, I'm just drafting. This is just photographing, measuring, and doing a stock photo. And then I upload them for my VA and she does everything else. So yeah, I can, I can do these in at least two hours. So it's doable, I need to focus better. This week, I had two days because it's a short week, but I, what did I get, 40, 46 listings? So a little bit less than 50, but better than I have been doing the last few weeks. Um, I'm also still stocking up for fall and winter. I have lots of great fall and winter pieces coming out soon. Um, I have like three Ikea bags I'm going to do a haul for, and then I'm going to have those listed next week. So I'm trying to be ahead on my inventory so that I'm not going into the week knowing that I have to like source to list, right? I'm trying to be ahead of the game so that I can list without the pressure of sourcing every week if my stores are dry for a little bit. Um, I'm also trying to stay at my two days a week at the hospital, which is two 12 hour shifts. And I think they'll be able to start falling more consistently. So I like to work Monday, Tuesday at the hospital and then do my business Wednesday to Friday. And that's my reselling business, YouTube and anything else that I have going on outside of working at the hospital. And then I also am focusing on enjoying my weekends. I've been shutting off my social media a lot. So if I don't reply to you right away, it's because I've really tried to disconnect um, from being in the public all the time because it it does wear you down and it, it is very challenging. And to anyone that that manages everything with grace and like with a big smile on their face, good for them, because it is hard AF, it is, it is very challenging. So I'm trying to set up better boundaries in my life right now where I give myself space. I've also stepped away from my business a little bit more where I just let it kind of run on its own, let Posh Sidekick do its business, send out my offers, um, relist my items, all that jazz. And they have lots of really cool features. I think I need to do a Posh Sidekick video soon too on all the new features that have come out. Things like how to use it, how to utilize it, how to optimize it. Um, so I'm going to add that to my list over the next few weeks to do a video with you guys. And I'll talk to Michael, get all the, get everything added up. Um, cause yeah, I made all these sales and I've really like, I'm telling you guys, I've really stepped away from my business lately and just trying to take care of myself. So on that note, I want to hear what are your business goals over the next two weeks? Also, can you, relate to that like whole mental health aspect so something I noticed is that um I'm gonna dip my toes in this a little bit right now is that when my sales are slow sometimes I feel down or I feel sad or I feel disappointed you know I could have listed more I could have done this da, da 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 and I what I'm working on right now is like disconnecting my sales do not equate to my mental health my sales do not equate to my happiness do you know what I mean it's so hard as a reseller because sometimes they just mingle so much, but it's not healthy and it makes you feel not good. So you feel great when your business is running, you're making money and you're doing good. But when things aren't going good, I don't like that feeling. So yeah, I've, like I said, I've been disconnecting because <laughs> I need to take care of myself. Just like I want to see you guys taking care of yourselves. So if you have any tips or anything you want to share on things that you do that work well for you, please drop them down below because I think so many of us can can relate to that. It's just, yeah, I, I know we all go through it. And those that don't, they are strong as hell. <laughs> like They are like cream of the crop people. But yeah, I struggle with it too. All right, on that note, I'm gonna head out of here. Uh, I have some good videos coming up soon and trying to get back into my schedule. I, I keep saying it's gonna happen. I promise you guys, it's gonna happen soon. But I have to take care of myself so that I can be the best version when I come here online for you guys. All right, well, I am wishing you guys all oh, many sales. So, so many sales, we need it. Extra, extra sales. And I will see you next time. Bye.